Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, it's early in the morning in Michigan and earlier on the West Coast. Uh, my name is Kevin Bird. I am a finishing PhD student at Michigan State. And today I'll be talking about some of my work looking at gene doses constraints and how they affect the transcriptional response to allopolyploidy and homeologous exchange in a population of recent besides Braska napis. So um, the concept of genomic imbalance has been something that scientists have observed for about a century, starting with Blakesley. And the general idea is that when you increase or decrease the number of individual chromosomes, there's a more deleterious effect than if you increase or decrease entire sets of chromosomes. And while this was observed repeatedly, there wasn't a clear uh, idea of what the cause of this was. And so um, several decades later, the gene balance hypothesis was proposed to explain what produced genomic imbalance. And the main idea here is that the stoichiometry of members of multi subunit complexes, complex kind of protein multimers, can affect the amount of functional complete product. And so we can kind of see this sketched out in the cartoon to the side here. On uh, the top left in panel A, you have uh, a dimer composed of the yellow and the red component. And here we have an equal amount of yellow and red parts, and we produce enough to bind in cis and, and affect expression here. Um, in uh, panel B, uh, just below that, you have an, an increase in the absolute value of yellow and red components, but the relative proportions in the stoichiometry remain the same. So we still have proper formation of, of dimers, we have binding, we have expression. But then in panel C, uh, instead, we have um, an, in, an unequal number of, of red and yellow components, uh, which doesn't allow for the, the proper formation of a functional product and affects the expression. And so the idea here then is that changes to the stoichiometry can affect patterns of gene expression. It can affect then the phenotype of a plant. It can affect evolutionary fitness in the long term. And then it also has been shown to affect duplicate gene retention uh, through various means. And uh, the reason for this is that, as, as people probably know, there's more than one way to, to produce duplicate genes. You can have whole genome duplication, which just doubles everything. You can have tandems, which doubles uh, the gene uh, very proximal to the original. And then you can have transposon mediated or segmental duplications that duplicates a, a small region, usually uh, more distant than a tandem duplicate. And so um, this, these different processes of gene duplication can lead to different levels of genomic balance. So this has been observed as studied across angiosperm genomes and a consistent finding most strongly identified in Arabidopsis is that there's biased patterns of duplicate gene retention depending on the mode of transportation. So, uh, and depending on the functional, the function of the genes. So transcriptional and developmental regulators and signal transducers have been shown to have greater than average duplicate retention after whole genome duplication, which follows from the gene balance hypothesis because these are going to be genes involved in, in, in um, multi-component complexes, highly interactive within gene networks, things that would uh, affect and lead to genome imbalance. And on the flip side of this, there's something called reciprocal retention, which is that genes that have been found to be preferentially retained after whole genome duplication are more often lost after small scale duplications like tandem duplicates or segmentals. <clears throat> Combining this together, also looking across the angiosperm phylogeny research has shown that over long-term evolution, whole duplicate retained genes show reduced non-synonymous sequence divergence, functional divergence, and expression divergence. <clears throat> so this is the long-term evolutionary implications. The short-term predictions, um, most prominently reported recently by Song et al. in 2020, confirms two predictions about the gene balance hypothesis in, in their samples of resynthesized or in synthesized autopolyploid Arabidopsis thaliana. The first finding is that whole genome duplication changes the gene expression of doses sensitive genes. There needs to be a change in expression so selection can act on them in the long term. <clears throat> the second is that these changes should be similar for genes in the in the network. Uh, genes that are um, more likely to be dose insensitive should have a more coordinated expression response so that the stoichiometry of gene products can remain the same. Now, this was a really a cool finding of looking at how genome duplication affects transcriptional response and how dosage constrains that. 
But there's more to investigate here, as there always is. So there's two kinds of polyploidy for people who are less familiar with the polyploid world. There's autopolyploidy, typically considered to be within a species or the direct doubling of an individual's genomic material. And there's allopolyploidy, which involves hybridization and then duplication of the hybrid genome or duplication prior to hybridization and then hybridization, resulting in two evolutionarily diverged genomes in the nucleus. Now, there's lots of cool things that happens with this. You're combining diverged regulatory epigenetic and genetic machinery into a single nucleus, which leads to a more complex scenario than you get just from autopolyploidy. So to investigate this and to focus on this allopolyploidy aspect, I used a, a unique population of resynthesized allopolyploid Brassica napis. So we know the parents of Brassica napis. It's Brassica rapa, which you may know as turnip, Brassica laracea, which is broccoli, cauliflower, kale, kohlrabi. Um, taking two lines that are doubled haploid and crossing them produced uh, isogenic, uh, independently uh, um, crossed um, allopolyploid lines. Um, these lines accumulated interesting things like genomic rearrangements, aneuploidy, um, and for six of these lines, we had paired whole genome resequencing and RNA-seq for generations one, five, and 10. And so I think this population is really cool. You can see in the picture down here, a single line across 11 generations, and it spontaneously generated a dwarf phenotype, um, thought to be because of a, a genomic rearrangement that, that spontaneously occurred after several generations. <clears throat> so the first step is to um, in this case, borrow the classifications of gene ontology terms that Song et al. used for their study. Dividing up GO terms into ones presumed to be dosage insensitive. In this case, those are ones <clears throat> that based off of regression over GO terms in Arabidopsis are more likely to be retained by small scale duplications, tandems, segmentals, and dosage sensitive genes, class two and blue, which are more likely to be retained by whole genome duplications, the alpha whole genome duplication in Arabidopsis. So Brassica napis is phylogenetically very close to Arabidopsis and the Arabidopsis annotation is far better. So taking the GO terms for Arabidopsis orthologs and transposing those onto the Brassica genes was the approach that I took for this. Um, then the idea is to look at the full change in expression of the polyploid compared to the midparent and calculate the coefficient of variance for that. So starting here on the y-axis, we're looking at the coefficient of variation. This is just going to be how variable the response is among genes within a GO term. GO terms represented by the black dots here. And the colored boxes are the different gene ontology classes. So in red, the, the dosage insensitive ones, and in blue, the dosage sensitive ones. So the first finding here is that uh, as predicted by the gene balance hypothesis, genes uh, that are purportedly dosage sensitive are having more coordinated expression response. There's less variance in how these genes are expressed after polyploidy. Um, this is cool. We have more or less replicated the results of Tong et al. in a different, um, a different scenario with allopolyploidy, um, showing that this response to duplication is a fairly general phenomenon. Now, uh, there's more exciting things to look at in all of polyploids. There's something called subgenome dominance, which is an, an asymmetry between the subgenomes within an allopolyploid, those two diverged genomes. And the most prominent uh, aspect of subgenome dominance in newly formed polyploids is that there's lower DNA methylation and higher gene expression for these genes uh, for one of the subgenomes, the dominant subgenome. And so we can break out the, the expression response by gene pairs that I previously identified as not having expression dominance, be having expression bias towards the non-dominant copy, and having expression bias towards the dominant copy. And when we do this, we find a really interesting result, which is if we look at gene pairs with expression bias towards the non-dominant copy, we don't see the same relationship. There is no difference between the, the coordination of expression between dosage sense, insensitive and sensitive genes. When we look at gene pairs bias towards the dominant, we see the same pattern we saw in general, which is dosage sensitive genes having, or GO terms having a more coordinated expression response. And we also see that with unbiased gene pairs that did not show biased expression. Now, it's hard to explain this. This is um, the first that I have seen discuss the relationship between subgenome dominance and dosage balance, especially in, in a newly formed polyploid. Um, what exactly may be causing this isn't clear. However, uh, remind, remembering that dosage balance is about connectivity in networks and multi-subunit complexes, 
um, my previous work looked at, at uh, biased gene pairs and their protein-protein interaction network. And so on the left are gene pairs biased towards the non-dominant subgenome across these six lines. There's not a lot of enrichment for, for connectivity in this network. On the right are gene pairs biased towards the dominant subgenome. And there's a lot of enrichment for connectivity, a lot of functional enrichment here. So following the logic through the, the dosage balance, the constraints on dosage balance are about interactions and multi-component complexes. There may be um, more interactions within gene pairs biased towards the dominant subgenome driving the dosage constraint that doesn't exist for the non-dominant. How general this is, uh, I definitely can't say. And then finally, we have the time component. So when we look across the generations, we see across all of them, the same result, which is the dosage sensitive go terms have a more coordinated expression response. There's less variance in the expression response of these go terms. Uh, but overall, there is an increase in the variance of expression for everything, both dosage insensitive and dosage sensitive. So a quick summary here, we replicate Song et al's findings of a coordinated expression response for dosage sensitive go terms. Uh, there is a bias, genes bias towards the non-dominant subgenome do not show this pattern. And uh, all expression changes observed appear to become more variable over time. Or the, the expression of these genes in the background is more variable over time. Now, uh, I am endlessly fascinated by allopolyploids, so there is still more to mine from this amazing phenomena, which is that recombination can occur between subgenomes, something called homologous recombination, where um, there is pairing and crossing over between subgenomes, and this can change the copy number and change the ratio of G of homologs through um, non-reciprocal recombination. So instead of having two from parent A and two from parent B, we can now have three and one, zero and four, and vice versa. Um, this is a kind of change in dosage. So um, I use the resequencing data, looking at changes in the ratio of, of uh, read depth to homeologous regions, and identify genomic rearrangements. So here we see cases where a portion of a chromosome subgenome A Chromosome three uh, lost read depth, uh, lost uh, lowered in the read ratio, and there was a commensurate increase on subgenome C chromosome three, where there's an increase in the read. So this is interpreted as a non-reciprocal uh, homologous exchange and a change in dosage caused by this recombination. And so my question is, does this show the same sort of dosage constraint to expression response? Um, there is an expression response. So homeolex exchange does change the expression of genes when you change the copy number that way. And again, I find that dosage sensitive geontology terms have a more coordinated expression response than dosage insensitive ones. So it appears the same dosage constraints are acting on homeolex exchange. Um, again, the same results in terms of subgenome dominance, the non gene pairs bias towards the non-dominant subgenome are not showing a, a more coordinated response, but dominant and unbiased ones are. And there are differences between all the generations and an increase in variance over time. So again, to summarize this expression response to homeotic exchange is more coordinated for dosage sensitive go terms, which follows predictions of, of the gene balance hypothesis. Um, the same general trends are seen for the expression response to homeologous exchange as you saw for whole, whole genome duplication. Um, and so the conclusions of this work is uh, it appears that constraints on gene dosage act immediately on gene expression changes after allopoly ploidy, like they do in autopolyploidy, that dosage balance constraints may vary depending on the direction of biased homeolog expression, which is new and exciting. And homeologous exchanges are also governed by constraints by dosage balance, which is also a, a, a new result as far as I can tell from reading the literature. Um, there's lots of future directions for this. These lines have a lot of genomic rearrangements, and there's a lot of uh, other things happening in the background. So studies that can isolate the effects of homeologous exchange will be extremely important to, to fully get that going and not dealing with lots of background effects and, and trans expression changes from other things. Um, finding out what may be causing the increase in variation in expression. Um, this could be uh, a weakening of the dosage constraint, or it also could be just evidence that the dosage constraint isn't as strong as it appears immediately after a dosage change. And there's some wiggle room we don't know about. And finally, really exploring this interaction with subgenome dominance out, outside cases of Brassica and Apis to see if this is a more general interaction between the two. Um, I want to thank my advisors, Pat Edger and Bob Van Buren, my collaborators, Yang Zhang at Inter Mongolia University, and Chris Pierce now at the New York Botanical Garden, and funding 
uh, from my NSFGRFP, from MSU Startup Funds, and from the Ag Bio Research Program. Uh, and if there's time left, I will take questions.